Rayman 3 was the second game I ever played on my PlayStation 2. I remember waking up on my 7th birthday to my parents greeting me as they handed me a video game shaped present. As it turned out, that present was the full game of Rayman 3. They must have noticed how often I was playing the game's demo discs that I had received with several McDonald's Happy Meals and felt the full experience would have made me happy. How right they were. Rayman 3 really and truly showed me just how beautiful video games could be with some really amazing locations and levels for you to explore. My young imagination went into a frenzy and I was fascinated by the world the game let me delve into, from the Fairy Council all the way to the Tower of the Leptis. However, it would be a while until I eventually reached the final areas of the game. And that was due to a specific level in the game that affected me in ways none of the other levels really did. They never even came close. This level... terrified me to no end and left me almost speechless. And I think this comment left on this Haruka Tavares video pretty much sums up my first experiences with this level up. After getting halfway through it, I had to take a break from playing the level for an extended period of time, just because of how scared I was of the level's primary enemies. Yes, Rayman 3 taught me the true beauty of video games. And it also taught me just how effective they could be at conjuring emotions within me that I didn't think possible. So today, in honor of it being October, I want to examine just how this specific level was able to affect me in this way, and how it went about achieving these emotions. Let's talk about Rayman 3's scariest level. The Desert of the Kinoran, and what made these enemies so scary, and this whole location stand out so well. Every level in this game is distinct and memorable in its own way, and this one is no different. Your mission going in is to find the next teensy doctor that will help you deal with your friend Globox's problem of having accidentally swallowed the game's main villain, Andre, so we can get him out of Globox's body. Yeah, the plot is a bit silly, but no matter. That is what our objective will be for the time being. As soon as you enter the desert, it feels harsh and uninviting, with strong red, almost hellish colors greeting you, which is a stark contrast from the soft greens and blues of the previous level. It is a shock to the system, after the calm and serene land of the livid dead. From the very first frame, you know you're in for something much darker than what you've seen before, as you notice the intimidating skull of some long-dead large creature and realize that you cannot set foot anywhere on the blistering hot sand surrounding you. The massive skeletons of long-gone creatures make you wonder what could have possibly gone down here long before you showed up. And nothing quite this morbid has been present in the levels before this one. You'll also notice a massive intimidating mountain in the distance, which gives off a truly foreboding aura. The environment around you is subdued, but distinctly alive and unlike anything you've seen so far on your adventure. As Raymond and Globox venture down into the canyon before them, you encounter the usual enemies you've fought so far in the game, the hoodlums. Nothing out of the ordinary here so far, but how come they've boarded up this section? The level is really luring you into a false sense of security here. After some light platforming around this area, you help free some captured teensies. These teensies tell you that the only way forward is through the tunnels and then warn you of the so-called invincible Kinoran that inhabit them, and urge you to stay away from them at all costs. If they get their claws on you, you're dead. Well, it was a nice knowing ya! However, before this information can really sink in, as Raymond and Globox link up in this small room, the fragile floor below them unexpectedly gives way as the two fall straight into these mysterious caves. Once you enter these aforementioned caves, you immediately feel lost and completely detached from the rest of the game. The opening section where you fall through the floor is genuinely distressing, as your only friend in the desert, Globox, the only one keeping you somewhat safe, is carried away from you. You've most likely grown accustomed to Globox over the course of the last few levels, as he's almost always been there as a presence, so the fact that he is almost immediately snatched away from you to god knows where, shows you that there will be no nonsense moving forward. 
Now, all alone, you have to narrowly escape and survive through pure instinct, as one of the Kanoran violently bursts through a wall, charging towards you no questions asked. Before you have any time to process what just happened, the entire place is now crawling with multiple Kanaren, and now, you have to rely on your wits. Being here surrounded by dangers from all corners feels so wrong, as if you are somewhere you're really not supposed to be, but you have to fight your way through and sneak around as best you can. You cannot attack or damage these things in any way, and if you get too close to them, they will shield themselves while damaging you severely so staying far away from them is your best bet. The Kenoran emit a petrifying scream whenever they are out on patrol. This shout is so loud that it is hard not to flinch when they do it. For younger gamers, this is a lot. <sighs> They also continuously mutter quotes to themselves that showcase just how eager they are to catch their prey, in this case Rayman, further elevating the danger you're in. Skin him! Crush his bones! Tear off his flesh! Now, some of these quotes are more comedic to add some levity to the proceedings, Make him write bad checks. but for a 7-year-old Swedish kid, that won't register. The only way for you to redirect these bloodthirsty monsters is for you to shoot these gong bells with the rocket power-up, which will bring them there for a limited time so you can sneak past them. It is said that these bells imitate these sounds of frightened glutes, which were a cut creature from the game, but according to the game's lore, the Kenoran love punishing these small creatures, and so they cannot resist their call, which is why the sounds of these bells distract them. The Kenoran also hate sunlight, and so have taken refuge in these caves and it is up to you to navigate through them. If you can. With absolutely bone-chilling music and an extremely threatening ambience to boot, in a situation where the enemies actively pursue you relentlessly and you cannot fight back whatsoever, you are immediately on edge. This musical theme in particular is haunting. You see, the strange zombie chickens from Rayman 2 are back in this game, but this time, they're even worse than before, as they take on ghostly forms and have a horrifying musical theme from whenever they show up. They let out ghoulish sighs whenever they materialize and are defeated, and further contribute to the horror of the location. The second section of the tunnels, the impressive Great Hall, is sickly green and showcases a staggeringly tall tower shaped after the Kenoran god of Leptis, with incredibly suspenseful music playing. And quite a few Kenoran, now established as a major threat, roaming free around the premises and hunting you down if they see you. You catch a quick glimpse of Globox at the top of the tower before he is once again taken away, and he sounds genuinely terrified at the prospect of being stuck in these caves, and begs Rayman to go get him. Frighteningly enough, you have to make one of these monsters follow you, and walk over this pressure plate which activates the platforms you'll use to ascend the tower, so you really have to confront your fears. You really don't want to fall down while platforming here, as you know you are screwed if you do. The next section of the level is soon upon you, and the music that plays as you enter really conveys the feeling of the hopelessness of your situation while raising your anxieties. Does anybody have any cough syrup? Hey, 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 guys. I mean, don't you feel guilty about ganging up on a guy when he's all alone? No. Why? Do you? No, 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 no. Of course not. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Those humorous exchanges aren't really helping make these guys less scary. 
Soon you'll ascend the Kenoran Tower, quickly dodging to cover so that they won't spot you and knock you down. Once you reach the top, you just have to move forward. Oh yeah, the developers just had to surround you, making you think you're completely done for as you panic before the floor gives way and you fall down to safety. This section of the level just loves to make you think you're safe before more Kanarans show up, causing you to turn your heels, and when you are cornered with nowhere to go, they mess with your head like this. Then, these scary things get right up in your face in a cutscene as Reflux, the mighty Kanaran champion, makes his grand entrance, shoving the other Kanaran away, before challenging Rayman in the arena to a boss fight. It's actually kinda funny how Reflux, the supposedly most powerful Kanaran of them all, is the only one you're actually able to defeat. It's funny how that works out. Winning the fight grants Rayman and Globox their freedom as the Kenoran King Gumsy grants Rayman new powers. But was all that trauma worth it? Even after you exit the tunnels and come back out in complete silence, the harrowing effects of what you just experienced stick with you. I mean, even the hoodlums stay away from the caves. That should tell you something. The atmosphere is still extremely threatening and creepy outside. <sighs> I wonder what creature is making those sounds. You never find that out. Oh well, at least we're treated to the amazing Hudo Hoodlum theme, eh? Yeah, I love that theme a lot. It's where I got my YouTube channel name from, if you didn't know. Soon, the final doctor's office is upon you, and I have to ask, why would you set up shop in such a dangerous, inhospitable place? After dealing with the final hoodlums inside the doctor's office, that's it. You're done with the Desert of the Kanaran and move on with the story. All around, this is a horrifying level that blew my seven-year-old mind. Beating it made me feel like I had finally become a grown-up when I was little. <laughs> Yeah, right. Now that I'm 21, I feel greener than ever. The developers of this game really went out of their way to spook their audience here. Rayman had dabbled in scarier levels before with Rayman 2 and some spooky locations from that game, but never to this extent. They really play up the darker aspects this time around, especially when the rest of the game is quite cheerful and funny. The level plays with the concept of safety and changes things up by pinning you up against invulnerable enemies while cranking up the terror, making it very scary, especially for younger players. Like I mentioned previously, this place loves to lure you into a false sense of security before pulling the rug from under you and pinning you up against great risks. It utilizes a strong atmosphere of fear and music that fills you with dread and trepidation. The dark, intimidating visuals, going from fiery reds to sickly greens, and such gloominess really makes the player feel unsafe. It's difficult not to tense up when one of these things spot you and charge towards you, or when they let out their awful, guttural shouts that would make anyone cower. Despite that, the level showcases some really, really fascinating locations. The level design is on point, and there are a lot of little details to pay attention to that gives the desert a lot of personality. For example, the giant statues and the cave paintings around the tunnels and outside tell you a lot about the Kanoran culture and a little bit about their history. It's simple world building, but it is intriguing and appreciated, and makes you feel even more isolated, as you're definitely encroaching inside a society that would probably much prefer to be left alone. You've gone from fairy tale wonderlands to peaceful forests and a quiet swamp. And then suddenly, here we are, in a bleak, practically uninhabitable desert as we crash down into a dangerous hidden civilization with unbeatable enemies that couldn't be more different than the hoodlums you've been fighting up to that point. It is completely unexpected, and that is what makes it work so well, alongside all the reasons that I've gone over in this video. 
The desert plays tricks on your mind and makes sure you can never quite rest easy. And once you're finished and venture away from the place, you never quite encounter something like it for the rest of the game. That is why the Desert of the Kanoran is so scary. Thanks for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed my light analysis of one level of one of my favorite games out there. It was a lot of fun to revisit this old childhood favorite. If you enjoyed the video, I would love if you could give it a like and maybe comment your thoughts down below. What level in an otherwise innocent seeming game scared you when you were younger? Let me know, I would love to hear what you have to say. If you enjoy this video and want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe. You can also check out my social medias to keep up to date with me, or check out my Patreon page, or my merch store if you wish to support me a little more directly. Again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome everyone, good bye.